Hello, I'm Sergei and welcome to a Mesh to HRDF tutorial. In this video I will edit the 3D scan data from a previous video to make the complete 3D mesh for Mesh to HRDF simulations. As usual there is a link in the description to the up-to-date written tutorial with more details. As you can see in the written tutorial there are many different programs and techniques to process 3D data, so what you see here is just an example. For this tutorial I will be using mostly MeshLab and Blender. The reason I'm choosing these two programs, Blender is already installed, is because they are available on all platforms. But I personally have used Mesh Mixer as well and it works very very nice, but it's Windows only and uh, is no longer supported. So we go to MeshLab, we just jump to download, in this case I'm downloading Windows version and uh, it's already complete, so I'll just quickly install it. It's as simple as just defaults are good and run it. That's a mesh lab. And here I have my 3D scan data, which I got from Hegus 3D. If you remember from previous video, there are five takes. So the first one was actually bad. I'll put it into a separate folder. The first take was bad. Then the first detailed scan was bad. I'll quickly remove, rename this to base. Notice that these files have a dot here. And in my experience, MeshLab did not like that dot. So I will rename this to just something because I don't remember which side was which. I'll rename like this. We go and open the base mesh. Unify, I don't know, I'll just go OK. In this case I will be jumping over a lot of things which are written in the written tutorial. I think it's much easier to understand when you see the live demo than to try to connect it to the actual written text. What you can see in a written text is that the first step is pick the best files. And in this demo I only have the best files already, so you can see how I would recommend you to choose the best take, but in this case I'm jumping this over. Simplify the scene, we will do this. Notice that in the written tutorial I have instructions for MeshLab, which you will also see in this video. But there's also instructions for Mesh Mixer, because I used it previously and I noted down some of the tricks I used there as well. Then we'll do alignment, which perhaps Mesh Mixer is slightly better than MeshLab, but MeshLab will do. Then we do the cutout of the ears. This is a mesh lab version, this is a mesh mixer version, and you can obviously do this in other programs. Then there's some final trimming and fixing, merging and uh, smoothing the seams and other surface corrections. That's going to be a tricky part where we want to simulate something which looks like an earplug with a microphone deeply inserted into the ear canal. And then there's an export part. So the last part of the written tutorial is how to make sure the 3D mesh is ready. And I think we will cover this to some extent in this video as well. So let's jump back to the mesh lab and I'll try to introduce you to this quite quirky program. For example, it does not have undo at all. And uh, you can import multiple files, which I'm going to do now. So anything you do which you don't like, you have to reload. There is no way to go back. So in this program, there is a thing called F1 on screen quick help which can be useful to get the basics. What's interesting is if you see these circles, it means you can rotate. If you don't see them, 
then you are in some kind of tool. So for example, I, okay, I'll hide some of the files before. Um, you can drag by holding the middle mouse. And there are also shortcuts on a keyboard. It only works on numpad. So if you don't have numpad, you might need to find another trick to do this. So first I'm going to just delete some of the... I'm going to take a side view. Side view looks pretty good. And I'll delete everything under the neck. Control and drag. So to do that, I'm going to take the select faces and vertices inside polyline and just drag like this. You have to click around to form a shape and then I'll hide this menu by pressing F1. It says you have to press Q to add. So now I added everything under this line. And notice while I'm doing this, I can't rotate the view. But if I press escape, I get the circles back. It means now I can rotate the view. I can look around. What did I select? So for this tutorial, I will not use shoulders. And in fact, lately, I don't like to use shoulders. So I just press delete to get rid of everything under the neck. And the rest. In this case, the scan is very clean, but I will still do the select faces, connected faces. And now when I clicked on it, notice I still have these circles. It means I can't select still. I can't use a tool to press on it once again. Now the circles disappeared. Now I can actually do a selection. So I selected everything, press I to invert and delete to delete anything which was loose. In this specific case, I might not even have anything to delete, but that's not a problem. So I made a basic cleanup of, the, of this. Now we take this detail scan. We can do some very rough cleanup. Remember, on this scan, we only want to use the ear. So everything under the neck is garbage. I will take the box selection. Nothing happens because I'm still in base selection. That's another tricky thing. You see, it actually did select it, but uh, that's not what I want. So I will deselect everything. D to deselect doesn't work doesn't work. Okay, then there is under filters, selection, select none, apply. Come on, now you should really deselect everything. Uh, as I said, this program is somewhat quirky. Apply. So I managed to deselect everything by using the normal filters, selection, select none or control shift D. So now I'm going to hide, switch to the next model. So now I switched it, I unhidden it. I can drag it around a bit. Now I use the rectangular select to delete everything I don't need. Delete and just because I'm not sure how well this part was scanned, I will delete this as well. So I do want to have reference geometry, but not the part which I barely scanned. And now to finish the cleanup, I will select some of the mesh which I want to keep. And as you can see, there's some garbage flying around here. So I invert press delete and get rid of all of that. So now I should have pretty good data left. So the purpose here is we do not keep data which is known to be low quality. So for example, this part I didn't scan much. I was only focusing on this ear. 
So I will actually quickly get rid of this as well. Good. I'm happy with this. I go to the next one. Here you see some garbage flying around. But before we get to that, let's get rid of the things under under the ear. So I'll just select and delete. Anything else we want to get rid of? Again, I will delete this part of reference geometry. Delete. As I said, if you mess up, there is no way to go back unless you reload a file. Well, in this case, I only did a few operations, so it doesn't matter. Again, just to make sure, I will select... I'm using this select connected components in a region. Invert. You see something got selected now. I can actually press escape to rotate. Uh -huh. This is what's selected. And maybe things I don't see. And press delete to get rid of it. So now I should have everything cleaned up. In other cases you may need to do it more thoroughly. But we are done here. And now I'm going to save every file. And notice that you have to have backup of these, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to make a folder and just made a backup in case I mess something up. And now I'm going to overwrite these files. So I select base, save, OK one save okay and the last one so when everything is saved it's good to reload everything and it says reload all layers again this program is very quirky if you will not do this in the next step when we're going to try to align things it will actually try to use the original data before you get rid of the parts you don't see any longer so don't forget to do this. Okay, so I still haven't saved MeshLab project because we haven't really done anything unique so far. Now we do the... Let's quickly look at the tutorial. So what we did right now was simplifying the scene. You could also reduce the poly count at the moment but I don't really think it's necessary. My computer can handle this resolution just fine. So the next step is aligning the scans. And here is just better I show you how I do it. So I go to Align tool, which is this A letter. You need to select the base thing you want to use and you go Glue Mesh here. Then you select what you want to align. I'll hide the one I don't align and go to point-based gluing. And now you need to specify four points which are common among them. And you can be very rough. So in my case, I have this reference geometry, which I like very much. If you don't have it, let's, let's assume you don't have it. So I'm going to just pick a point on the ear. You certainly should have an ear. Uh, and I'm going to pick something on the nose, something on the mouth. Notice that you have to pick the same sequence, same points here and there. So I need a fourth point. Let's take point here and point here. Double click and press OK. And you can see it worked already. So notice I don't have circles, so I can't rotate anything. If I press escape, I have circles again. So now I can rotate. Now, after you got this preliminary alignment, you have to press process and you just slam a button several times. You can see some statistics on how well it's aligned. I don't know much about it, but 
if it looks like it's good and uh, it doesn't change much from one to another then you could say it's, it's ready for my tutorial purposes it's definitely ready now I take the next one so the base is still glued now I'm gonna click on the point base gluing and do the same thing again here I'm gonna use my reference mesh advantage and I'll just click in places which are very easy to locate these points are pretty much not important this is just to get the initial position for the algorithm to start working from so you can be very rough if it's there perfect we just press process process a few times and it should be there so now if I unhide the other part you should see that we have alignment just as we want it so we close the alignment tool and now I would recommend to go to save project as and there is a align project hidden down here just to be safe I'm gonna save this uh, doesn't matter and I'm also gonna save as MeshLab project okay now we have everything saved and I think we can go to the next step is cutting out the ears if we take a side view if you press ctrl numpad 3 you can switch between left and right side if it's not correctly aligned you can use the manipulation tool to rotate it into alignment better but in this case I'm happy as it is already to deselect the tool you have to press it again so I'm gonna now cut out the ear and to do that now double check what's written here so first we do the cutout in the detail scan so control drag is to pan I rotate into view now we have a good view on this we have a detail scan selected I take the rectangular selection region and when I select it yes so when I select it I want I want to have a big area in front of the ear to be smooth also it's quite good if you take a bit higher up in this case I didn't so now when I selected this I press invert so everything in the detail scan is selected except the ear and I press delete remember there's no undo so if you don't like what you got tough luck now I go back to the base mesh without changing anything and I'm gonna switch to wireframe mode to hopefully get a better view I must say it didn't help much but I do see the edges it should be good enough so I now when I have it selected I will again take this rectangular selection and, and make a slightly bigger box the reason it needs to be slightly bigger is because we will have a hole in between and that's where the stitching will fill it in we don't really want an overlap so now we have it selected looks good but this selection even if you hold alt to select only visible side is still not perfect so I will press escape to regain our zooming and rotation controls and uh, as you can see this is the ear we want to cut out this is the ear we don't want to touch yet so I'm gonna use numpad this is really bad so I unclick the wireframe uh -huh. so now we see what we are doing here and I'm gonna just take the select rectangular and we want to subtract so I hold down shift 
and subtract the side I don't want to delete. Now I press escape to get back to rotation. This is quite far into the neck, but I think it'll be fine anyway. And now I can just delete this part. Delete. So if we look what we've got, it looks like pretty good alignment in these places when it's going to be stitched. We will not notice much issues. So here we have this trivial hole on top of the ear. It will just disappear when we will stitch it together. This looks good. And I'll go to the other side. So I press free, numpad free to align to this side. Control drag to pan it in a better view. And how do we do this? We need to unhide the detail mesh. And I'm gonna go, oops, again, if, if you see the rotation circles, it means the tool is not selected, even though it shows that it's selected. So you need to first get it into position and then press this. Okay, now I hope it's selected. And I try to get quite a big chunk of cheek in front. I think this is pretty good, but I still need to leave room for even bigger cutout around it. So I select it, I invert and delete. That's my other side detail. Now I go back to base. And do the same thing on this side. I see this corner, so that's going to be nice. Select, make slightly bigger, pull, select. We got this. Press escape to get back to rotation. One on numpad to get it from a back, or if I press Ctrl-1, I get it from the front. As you can see, the head is not perfectly aligned. This is what we want to delete, this is what we want to keep. Press again, box select, shift to subtract, escape, checking, still good, nothing, select another side, and we can press delete. That's our other side. Again, looking at it as it is, looks pretty good. So now again, I'm gonna save everything. Everything is aligned, cut out, but we need to save the files and reload the files to be able to go to the next step in MeshLab. So I press save, OK, save, OK, and the last one, save, OK. Again, I'm overwriting the files. I do not want to add new file names because, again, there might be issues. And just to be sure, I will save project once again. Maybe this is unnecessary, but I will not risk. And now you go to reload everything. Let's see if it's going to reload well. Uh-huh. You can see what happened. After I reloaded, all the ears are gone. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open project. Let's try that project. I also say the alignment project in case we need it. No, the project file is good. So as you can see, we have everything prepared for the next step. And the next step after we cut out the ears is trim away all excess geometry. So at this stage, when alignment is great, we should get rid of the things we don't need on the top. To do this, I'm going to use 
delete. 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 Now when we have a lot of loose objects, I can take the select connected, invert, delete. Now I need to clean up a little bit to get rid of my reference geometry. I have quite a big hole on top, but we'll see how it develops. Notice here is one more tool for selecting uh, vertices. It looks very similar, but if you use that, you will not actually be able to delete. You need to select faces to use the delete button or you can use the delete selected vertices. But that's not a delete button shortcut. So continuing with the quirky editing. You can skip this part if you want and jump to the next chapter. I'm quite happy with what I got now and uh, because I was editing the base mesh I will save it again, only the base mesh, the other parts I didn't edit and I'll press again reload all layers and see what we got. Again everything ran away so I'll open the project instead. Open project. It's important to reload because otherwise you will get really strange results on the next step. So after we trim the way excess geometry, I'm going to merge it. And for merging, we need the screen Poisson method. And I would recommend to go with the setting 11. So you can find it here somewhere under remeshing blah 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 or you can just press and search and write poison screen poison here we are i'll say merge all visible layers so it doesn't matter which one is selected i'll select pre-clean and reconstruction depth that's the most important parameter you set it to 11 and click apply so this process relatively fast and what it's going to do is it's going to try to fill in the holes and in the process it will join the detail scan together with the base scan. While it is doing it, okay, it's done. So when the merging is done, by the way, in Mesh Mixer there are some other ways to do it manually because this method actually does remeshing of everything. If you do it at very high resolution, it should not be an issue. But uh, if you have performance issues, you perhaps want to use a more memory efficient approaches. So the last thing is smoothing of seams and all of that. And here you can do this in Mesh Mixer very well, but uh, Mesh Lab is not really suitable for small editing. So we will jump to Blender which means we're going to export what we've got. We got the Poisson mesh now. Let's quickly look at it here. So what did it do? It tried to close the hole in the bottom, but it actually didn't do it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It did close this hole and it did a pretty lousy job closing a hole at the top. So this needs to be sculpted afterwards. So I select the right mesh and I press save. This one I haven't saved before, so I'll just do, I don't know, complete head, save. 
PLY format is good. Defaults are good. And here is a good point to take a break for next video.